When day came, Nicaeus led his army on, and the Syracusans and their allies pressed them hard in the same way as before, showering missiles and hurling javelins in upon them from every side. The Athenians hurried on towards the river Asinaris, partly because they were under pressure from the attacks made upon them from every side by the numbers of cavalry and the masses of other troops, and thought that things would not be so bad if they got to the river, partly because they were exhausted and were longing for water to drink. Once they reached the river, they rushed down into it, and now all discipline was at an end. Every man wanted to be the first to get across, and as the enemy persisted in his attacks, the crossing now became a difficult matter. Forced to crowd in close together, they fell upon each other and trampled each other underfoot. Some were killed immediately by their own spears. Others got entangled among themselves and among the baggage and were swept away by the river. Syracusan troops were stationed on the opposite bank, which was a steep one. They hurled down their weapons from above on the Athenians, most of whom, in a disordered mass, were greedily drinking in the deep river bed. And the Peloponnesians came down and slaughtered them, especially those who were in the river. The water immediately became foul, but nevertheless they went on drinking it, all muddy as it was and stained with blood. Indeed, most of them were fighting among themselves to have it. Finally, when the many dead were now heaped upon each other in the bed of the stream, when part of the army had been destroyed there in the river, and the few who managed to get away had been cut down by the cavalry, Nicaeus surrendered himself to Gylippus, whom he trusted more than he did the Syracusans, telling him and the Spartans to do what they liked with him personally, but to stop the slaughter of his soldiers. That scene of terrible warfare is from this book. This is the history of the Peloponnesian War by Thucydides. Thucydides, one of the first great Greek historians, uh, he lived between 460 and 400 BC. He was a great Roman historian, probably one of the greatest historians who has ever lived. He came after Herodotus, but his style is very, very different. It's striking, really, how different Thucydides is from Herodotus. And that's one of the really interesting things about this book. I read Herodotus first, and I read this immediately after. And I was struck just by the difference in tone and in style Thucydides was a much more practical historian. He was a much more realistic historian. Herodotus went on a lot of tangents. He told a lot of folk tales. Uh, a lot of Herodotus's history, even though most of it is based on actual events, kind of had a storybook quality to it, just because of all the legends and wonders that he talked about. Thucydides is all business. There's none of that folktale, uh, wonderful wonders types of th type of thing in Thucydides. He is a very realistic writer. Thucydides was a general in the Peloponnesian War. He saw uh, the events of this war happen. He was in the middle of it. And he had an interesting perspective. At one point, uh, while he was a general, another uh, general called him for help to come and save the city uh, that the other general was at from the Spartans. And Thucydides tried to get there in time, but he didn't get there in time, and that city fell. Thucydides was blamed uh, by the Athenian government and the Athenian democracy exiled Thucydides. And Thucydides went to Sparta and spent some time in, with, in the Peloponnese. 
And so he, he had a really interesting perspective because he saw the war from both sides. So he can tell a really interesting account of this war. And he saw immediately that this war was going to be a big deal even before it started. Uh, as he mentions in his introduction, uh, which I will read you real quick because it's interesting. Thucydides, the Athenian, wrote the history of the war fought between Athens and Sparta, beginning the account at the very outbreak of the war in the belief that it was going to be a great war and more worth writing about than any of those which had taken place in the past. My belief was based on the fact that the two sides were at the very height of their power and preparedness. And I saw, too, that the rest of the Hellenic world was committed to one side or the other. Even those who were not immediately engaged were deliberating on the courses which they were to take later. Basically, this was the World War II of the Greek world. The conflict between Athens and Sparta, which started off small between kind of a, a smaller fight between allies and blew up into this huge war between these two sides. Athens had made itself a really powerful empire after the Persian Wars. Athens was charged with the defense uh, of Greece against any further Persian action against them after the Persian Wars. And they used that to kind of create their own empire. And eventually they were an Athenian empire and they were a great power in, B in Greece. Uh, the only power that could stand against them were the Spartans, who could not be more different uh, than the Athenians. Very different culture, the Spartans. The Spartans were Southern Greeks. And eventually, because they were so powerful, they were kind of destined to fight each other. Everybody kind of expected uh, them to fight each other eventually. So it wasn't hard to see uh, which way the winds were blowing. Uh, and as Thucydides said, everybody started to choose and pick sides. And the war was huge and it was devastating and it lasted for years and years and years. There was a period uh, of peace. Thucydides calls it a false peace and it didn't last, of course. And eventually they went back to war. And it really devastated Greece. Uh, it cost them uh, a great deal. They were very exhausted by the war. They were a war-exhausted country uh, by the end of this thing. And Thucydides, the way he describes things is very, very realistic, which you can kind of see in that little bit I read you at the beginning there, uh, which takes place uh, in the disaster in Sicily. Athens decided to try to conquer Sicily. It didn't go well. Um, this is one of the first books where you really get a sense of political realism in history. Uh, because he experienced these events, you get a really sense of an eyewitness kind of history. Uh, there, there was a period in the beginning, Athens, as a means of defense against Sparta, crowded all of their people behind the walls in Athens. And at that very time, a plague broke out. It was a devastating plague, which Thucydides, Thucydides describes in great detail. And Thucydides himself caught the plague. He survived, but he was able to describe everything about it. He was able to describe what it was like for the people in the city. And this book really makes you realize that the people fighting this war and who existed in this time 2,000 years ago were very, very real. Like I said, it's a very different feel from Herodotus where it does feel distant because of the way it's written. Uh, I personally feel Herodotus in many ways is probably the greater historian, but certainly with Thucydides, you get a much 
different view of things. Everything seems a lot more real and immediate in Thucydides. Uh, all the actions that are taken feel very familiar. The decisions that they make feel very familiar uh, in that we see a lot of that in our own politics today. Uh, it, this book really makes you realize that people have not changed in 2,000 years, like at all. Um, and that's interesting to realize. Uh, altogether, this is a fantastic book. Um, it can be hard going if you're not used to reading some ancient histories. He can be dry, Thucydides. He always could be. Uh, famously, he wrote in a very uh, difficult form of Greek uh, to translate. And some of that carries over in the translations. But at the same time, it's a very realistic book. And the very realism uh, is what draws you in. Um, it did for me, at least. I find this book fascinating. I've read it a few times. I'm sure to read it a few more times in my life. This is another one of those instances uh, where there is a superior volume, though. Uh, we do have this, the landmark Thucydides. This was the first landmark volume that was put out by Robert B. Strassler. Uh, it's full of maps, dates, there, everything is dated so you never lose your place, a lot of notes, a lot of append appendices. Uh, yeah, there are maps just about on every page because, it, because again, when you're talking about the ancient Greek world, a lot of names have changed, a lot of places have changed. Uh, you, unless you're up on this stuff, you might not know these different places that Thucydides is talking about. And he's very detailed about the different places uh, that he talks about. Altogether, this is an excellent volume. And probably, if you're going to read Thucydides, this is what to get. That's not to discount this, though, because this does have a really good translation. I actually prefer the translation in this than I do the one to, in this. Although, this one is very readable. Uh, they made sure of that. It's, it's readable, pretty easy to understand. I happen to like this one a little bit better um, as far as the translation goes. So there you go. But the maps in this one are all at the end, and they're junk. They're terrible maps. Well, the maps in this one are, frankly, fantastic. So if you're going to approach Thucydides for the first time, and you can, this is probably the one to get. This is one of those books that you will hear people say who have read it uh, and admire it that it's one of those books everybody should read. I'm not ever over anxious to say that everybody should read such and such book. But yeah, everybody should read this book. <laughs> probably. It's, it's probably one of those essential volumes, really. Um, and I highly recommend it, of course. So that was your Sunday Penguin for the day, Thucydides. I will be talking more about Thucydides in the future because I'm going to be going over all of the Greek historians in more detail. But this is just like a little introduction if you're unfamiliar. Be sure to catch me tomorrow. It's Monday, which means we're going to be talking about Robert E. Howard. I will catch you next time.